also uh, inspired by the idea of yoga, of uh, uh, communion uh, between uh, uh, the uh, nominal and the phenomenal, the individual and the uh, supreme uh, presence and within the world. that uh, that Swamiji had uh, said once that, uh, that we are not uh, cowards uh, fleeing before a revolution. We are not solitaries clustered in sanctuaries. We are guides, redeemers, benefactors, advancing on chaos and darkness. And so when he was, he is uh, 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 thinking of Buddha or uh, uh, seeing uh, Ramakrishna on the lotus, the uh, uh, in that form in the uh, temple, he is also thinking of that uh, uh, yogi. Uh, who is uh, epitomizing the Supreme Varsto in Africa. Um, therefore, when we uh, uh, compare Swamiji's uh, concept of art with the Western concept of art, one should recall what uh, uh, George Bardot had said about the Sarna Buddha, you should show the images, that uh, this is an uns uninspired resin image, vacuously squinting down its nose, a boiled sweet pudding would have uh, served equally well as a symbol of passionate purity and serenity, serenity of soul. This is the problem of understanding or misunderstanding. Um, it was impossible for Bardot to understand this image. And uh, as time has gone by, it is becoming uh, more and more difficult, even for an Indian to understand uh, his or her tradition. Because uh, art appreciation and art history have uh, come in to India as handmaids of Western art history and Western art appreciation. So the entire history of art and aesthetics in India is tied and moved in uh, Western art history and its uh, subsequent developments in space and time. And even today, uh, the fact that uh, Indian art explorations are tied to Western art galleries, exhibitions, my manifestors and documenters in Europe has uh, created the problem of uh, essencelessness and a sense of uh, uprootedness in Indian art. So therefore, it is very relevant to recall Samiji's uh, idea uh, about how art should be seen as uh, uh, it should be seen, a darshana rather than a mere visualization. 
So, um, when uh, we uh, are uh, uh, talking about uh, Swamiji, it would sound odd, but I would uh, move to a but uh, a great dancer, Mala Saraswati, had once uh, said, which is a comparison of uh, music with architecture. And uh, the consonants of form and meaning which Bala Saraswati understood through music, uh, Swamiji realized uh, through his uh, life, work, and his uh, creative outbursts in architecture at all. Mala Saraswati says, a musical recital is like a temple. The outer tower is Alaripu. The halfway or hall is Jakishwaram. The great hall is Shabdam. The holy sanctum is Varnam. Self-fulfillment is in Padam. When cascading, lights are withdrawn. Drum beats die down. In Tillana, the final uh, burst of sound takes place to die down and one is alone uh, with God. First we have meter and melody, then melody and meter, then music, meaning and meter, finally music and meaning without meter. Um, so, Swamiji is talking about uh, that sense of uh, the unseen behind the scene, that uh, Uh, that uh, if the waste uh, is seeing God in nature, we are seeing nature in God. And if uh, Greek anatomical uh, realism uh, looks at uh, counter diminution, entasis, or uh, balance of architectural limbs in Parthenon, we are uh, looking for this balance of matter and energy in our uh, creations. So Swamiji says, man is an infinite circle whose uh, circumference is everywhere. Center is in one place. God is an infinite circle whose circumference is nowhere, but center is everywhere. Man becomes God if he multiplies infinitely his center of consciousness. Jadeveha tadabutra jadamutra tadeveha mitto sa mitto apnati jaya pashyate So, all over the world he finds uh, these multiple centers of consciousness and uh, the convergence of that con consciousness in a luminous focus in art. So if one is discussing the line and the color and the pattern of art without uh, looking at the inner essence, then one is missing aesthetics uh, in art. And any art which lacks this inner glow, this luminosity, this energy, is art and not, it doesn't have aesthetics. It has uh, external uh, form, it doesn't have inner content. And in order to explain 
what is art and what is aesthetic art and what is aesthetics without art. One would uh, first talk about aesthetics without art. I mean, uh, much of contemporary art, be it uh, impressionism, uh, trying to communicate with the world, sensations of the world, or it is expressionism, which is trying to demonstrate the estrangement from this world, the ennui, the spiritual and the moral ennui. Uh, one knows what one is missing in this art. That the normlessness is uh, not necessarily, doesn't not necessarily make for great art. There are a lot of experiments, uh, but the aesthetics is missing. In the same way, when you look at Indian art, it will be easy to dif uh, differentiate uh, what is superior art and what is uh, art without aesthetics. And um, if on um, today that is not the topic, the history of Indian art, but uh, as one loop, uh, moves through history, one can see a what uh, is celebrated in Greek art as balance of ethos and pathos in Greek art is uh, also celebrated in Indian art as a mix of power and grace as a union of passion and intelligence. And that kind of uh, consonance of outer form and inner content, art and aesthetics, is seen at some points of uh, the history of Indian art. Gupta art being one such phase uh, in which uh, uh, the uh, the strength and the uh, beauty they come together and uh, later in much of uh, late medieval art uh, what Stella Kramrish calls the medieval factor comes in the medieval factor is a stultification of limbs, a stiffening of uh, uh, the pose, uh, extreme distortions and flexions in bhanga, and uh, a mere display of anatomical form without the inner energy. What Kumarasamy calls this is shithila samadhittam a slackening of attention that uh, there is a loss here of the fervor which created the uh, unity of form and meaning in earlier art and so this becomes art without aesthetics and it is, uh, if it is art without aesthetics, it is not even art. Uh, because uh, it is only an art of uh, patterns. Uh, as uh, is said, these uh, later artists, they have more to say, less to mean. The body is suffocated by ornament, harness of ornament. Uh, uh, the expression is stultified. Uh, the uh, outer parikara becomes uh, very elaborate and complexity it takes place of simplicity. So, um, um, 
it is what Swamiji says, not in so many words, that Indian art is not for Utkantha Vinodana, not for Bhutpati Matra, not for Vyapara Matra, is not for a mere entertainment, not for alleviation of anxiety or uh, giving utility, not for commercial uh, instrumental use. Ultimately, this is uh, for Rasaswadana. And the Rasaswadana is uh, akin to testing of God. Testing of God, which is called Brahmaswada Sahodara. And uh, this testing of God is also testing of Ananda. Um, um, talking about Ananda in Upanishads, um, the passages say that uh, Anandang uh, Shanvishanti, Anandang Prahanti, Etasai Bananda Sakhalu Imani Bhutani. Matram Upajivanti. It is that Ananda which uh, Tagore also celebrates as uh, the surplus of creativity. The surplus creates the joy. The surplus of creativity of God in which uh, these stellar constellations, uh, this entire uh, panorama of the universe has been created and uh, it is that joy which has to irradiate the art and when a viewer sees an art piece he or she will know whether that piece of art is uh, irradiated by that joy of creativity or not it will hit him or her like a ton of bricks immediately. The apprehension is immediate. There is no need for analysis. So the analysis for Swamiji is uh, incidental. Synthesis is the primary aim. So therefore he talks about harmonizing East and West. He uh, talks about um, finding that uh, one essence pervading everything, that sense of joy uh, that uh, breathes through the sky, uh, through the leaves, uh, through the uh, wind buffeting the tree, uh, through the swirl of the trees through the prowl of the tiger, uh, through the uh, prancing of a horse. Uh, so to capture that is the essence of art and once that is captured it is conveyed overwhelmingly as art with aesthetics. And um, Whenever uh, we see the human body as a visual catalog of grammatically accurate features, Greek art has been great art in this respect, in, with regard to fidelity, uh, to the minutest detail of nature. And yet, Swamiji is talking about an art in the Indian tradition which uh, has uh, lakshanas, uh, symbolic of the 
a dynamic uh, repose and the union of passion and intelligence. So, uh, if one is trying to find a Western analog, because uh, we have been asked to talk about the West and East relation also, one finds uh, some response in metaphysical poetry, also in the poetry of Wordsworth, who says in Prelude 3, the great mass lies embedded in quickening soul and respires with inward meaning. And uh, so if you are talking about uh, knowledge or analysis of art uh, with uh, a lot of references and lot of books, we shall miss the point in art appreciation. Because uh, knowledge is transcended in appreciation. Again, to establish a Western context, one quotes uh, Paul Valery, who says this in Motion Teste. What we see uh, blinds us, what we uh, know makes us unknowing. Knowledge is like a cloud obscuring the shining moon, the essence of being, a cataract in the eye. Remove it so may so you can see. So it is not uh, a lot of books, a lot of theory that will give us uh, an, uh, a passport to this understanding. And when Swamiji is talking about unity in diversity, or when he is uniting the forms in Belurmat or in his uh, life and work. Um, again, to establish a Western context, I quote uh, Leibniz from Monadology, who says, each portion of matter is conceivable as a garden full of plants, as a pond full of fishes, but each branch of the plant, each member of the animal, each drop of the humors is also such a garden and such a plant. It is this uh, uh, synthesis which uh, forms the foundation of art appreciation uh, beyond the dividing nodes of uh, art and aesthetics or scholarly discussions about the uh, finer subtleties of their difference. It is this immediate apprehension of uh, 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 the truth in the uh, painting or in the architecture, the truth uh, to the uh, elemental uh, realities uh, that one is talking about. Again, to establish a Western context in relation to an Eastern context, Lankavatara Sutra says, Rangena Vidyate Chitram Tattam Hi Akshara Varjitam The picture does not lie in the colors. The appreciation of reality goes beyond these letters. That's why Saint uh, Paul had said, the letter killeth. So, um, 
it is not uh, we are not talking about uh, fidelity to nature in its exact detail at the same time one is talk, not talking about desertion of nature total, totally um, the current uh, obsession of uh, completely uh, giving up um, uh, loyalty to any natural form or uh, making it a fetish to go after unnatural distortions uh, is more a fashion than a pursuit of art. It is being in sync with the global art movements so that the art sells. So uh, nature is not to be abjured. In this uh, respect, much of uh, Indian philosophy with regard to this uh, art and art appreciation and aesthetics has some analogous reflection in the medieval scholastic philosophy. So therefore Hevel describes an Western medieval church as uh, Eastern consciousness in the Western context. Swamiji also uh, brings in uh, uh, the Basilica and the Chaita Hall into the mud. But the uh, idea is not the outer form of the Western architecture or Eastern architecture. Meister Eckhart says that it is imitation of nature in the manner of its operation is not imitation of nature as it is. So when you see an image, I should show you some images like Pashupati for instance, Pashu Pasha Vivakshana um, in which the Pashu merges in Pati, Shiva by shuffling up not the mortal coils, but the coils of uh, Maya and illusion. And uh, it is that uh, uh, process uh, which uh, they try to bring into art to talk about Swamiji again. Samaji talks about the Pratima as a Pratika, as a symbol. If one gets stuck in the symbol, then one loses the aesthetics of it. One has to, as he says, this is uh, after Shankaracharya, that this is Adharopa. It is superimposition of uh, a form which is uh, devoid of meaning and uh, it is only by uh, man becomes God only by uh, doing interhumanity, communicating with them and uh, by uniting with him or her. That's why um, it is said, Na deva deva marchayet, Shiva bhutva Shivam jajet. Um, now, how does one unite with uh, uh, the description given in the Upanishads? Na tatra suro bhati, na chandra tarakam. Nema vidduto bhanti kutaya magni tameva bhantam anubhati sarvam tasya bhasa sarva vidavyahati that the sun doesn't shine nor the stars not to speak of this fire 
these thousands and millions of stars, they shine after him, that supernal essence. And it, we are looking for that Pinda Brahmanda uh, communion through art. So I'm expatiating on uh, Swamiji's ideas uh, th- uh, by uh, combing through his uh, volumes and uh, uh, and bringing his uh, sayings together to understand what exactly uh, he was trying to say. Uh, so. Um, it is uh, uh, this that we are uh, trying to uh, say in terms of arts and aesthetics that uh, in order to understand the art and aesthetic connection one doesn't have to go to semiology uh, or to of Sassur or gestalt psychology or Thimer or Rudolf uh, Arnheim's perception theories or uh, Jade Gist uh, uh, as given by Hegel and accumulate lot of knowledge about the history of art theories. One has to uh, understand the Indian art in its own terms and in order to understand Indian art in its own terms it is necessary uh, if reading is required to understand Abhinava Gupta or Ananda Vardhana or uh, uh, some of the uh, articles written by Kumaru Swami um, so, uh, uh, how many minutes have I spent so that I don't overshoot the time even showing the photographs? Um, um, so, uh, when we are looking at uh, a course like this, Uh, we should uh, remember that uh, Swamiji was talking about temples, churches as the kindergarten of religion. Their forms which are visible but they are recognizable only when the luminous encompassing presence of the Supreme shines through them as what he calls vibrations of light in volume 2. Living in the presence of God we make images of God. Living on the bank of Ganga we dig wells for water. Um, and this is echoed by a person like Walt Whitman when he says, why do, should I look at uh, uh, the face of God when I can look at myself in the glass? Uh, it is that uh, 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 sense of unity, of sound, meaning, and knowledge uh, which uh, Swamiji celebrates. Uh, It is a part of uh, and parcel of yoga to reach what he calls Saptadha Prantabhumi a state transcending mind and body transcending Jati, Kala, Desha, Samaya he compares in a beautiful passage the process with that of an oyster receiving a raindrop during the ascendance 
of the star Swati. It closes its shell, dives down to the bottom of the sea and develops the raindrop into a pearl. The process is uh, called uh, the pursuit of truth, Ritambhara. <clears throat> it is beyond, he clearly says, inference and testimony of Shuta Pramana. It is born out of Samadhi. This is elsewhere defined by him as Phota an explosion of energy in a stage of identification with Omkara uh, in Akhanda Satchidananda uh, form as Joy Supernal from which the real uh, symbols, from this pristine symbol, the other symbols visible are born. Now if, lo if it looks very esoteric that Swamiji is talking uh, over our head. One should look at what he has done. Therefore now I invite you to see some of the <coughs> uh, sim symbols which he created. Shall we go with the slides now? We shall show the um, um, logo of the Ramakrishna Martin mission first. The seal. Um, now, rather than uh, in interfere with your appreciation of the photograph, one should uh, explain that Samiji no, yes, it's called Oka Hagia. The emblem is called the Kade, Hagia. One is Sajay, two stars in Tata. The emblem. Okay, show the architecture. I shall revise my presentation. Now, this is, uh, this is the emblem. Okay. Now, now Samiji explains the lotus as symbolic of bhakti, devotion. The rising sun as symbolic of jnana, pratika, of jnana, knowledge. The encircling serpent as symbolic of kundalini shakti, awakened in yoga. And I would say, then we look, when we shall look at the architecture and he stations we st uh, we, the mission stations Swamiji on a lotus seat uh, inside the hall they are seeing him Ramakrishna as epitomizing the union of jnana, bhakti and yoga which is which was the attempt of Swamiji also in his life, and one again recalls the Upanishadic sloka: "Sa eko hansa bhavanas sas samadhe sa ibagnihi salile sannivishya uh, tameva." Tamakratu Pashati Vito Shokaha Dhatu Prasadan Mahimanam Atmana is the one uh, luminous Hangsa. Hangsa is also translated as So Aham in Pranayama. So it uh, becomes Hangsa. Um, and um, so the hangsa becomes equated with Rami Ram Ramakrishna 
sitting on that lotus uh, seat in the temple. And Saibagni Shalile Sanni Vishya, now the entire Vedic and Upanishadic philosophy talks about the human being as Agni Samyo Poshuhu. And uh, I shall show in some of these uh, images how that, Im- that concept is sought to be realized. As the union of fire and water, now it may seem an abstraction, but what is uh, explained is that in yoga, one turns the fiery element of retas, semen, shakshukra, into by tapas into soma and it is this transformation of nature which uh, animates the image if it is a real image which is trying to capture the supernal so Kumara Swami again uh, talks about and what are cosmological perception pervading entire Asia and India in which a tree comes to blossom with the touch of a lady's foot or comes to flower in which men come to birth and women come to birth in which the clouds uh, pour down in a burst of shower, in which the nature blossoms in uh, flower and foliage. He talks about this water fol- water's uh, cosmology as a permeating philosophy all across Asia, India, which also comes into this theory of Agni Samyo Pushu. So we move now to the architecture. Move to the architecture, these slides. Well, I mean, while he is doing it so that people uh, don't get uh, bored, um, the architecture is seen in various analysis. Um, Now, it is this is part of the architecture at the entrance. (laughs) So, Eko Hangsa Bhuvanasa Samadhe Savyagdi Salile Sandivishta is seen here. Move on. And uh, then we see the hall inside and uh, Ramakrishna seated at the back. Move on, move on. You have to be here. And uh, uh, so while uh, he is setting the slides, let us uh, talk about what all this means. It is not just uh, a concatenation of limbs of architecture of uh, um, because there is a discussion of what are the elements which are assembled in this architecture you move on um, that it is uh, a combination of features from east and west of a western uh, basilica a, uh, a crypt and a, uh, a place where this uh, Ramakrishna is sitting above which there is a canopy like in church there is a baldachino and then there are um, these uh, shapes which recall to us the face of uh, western cave architecture like Karle, Kondane etc or the hall, which he calls the Chaita Hall. The mix of uh, uh, material, marble, brick, 
चूनाट सैंड स्टोन एक्सेट्रा नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट सो दि चैत्य हॉल कार्ले एंड दि बाट्रेस अब नेक्स्ट शोइंग खाजुराहो कदारिया महादेव टेम्पल वी आर ट्राइंग टू से दैट दिस बेलू टेम्पल गोज बियॉन्ड दिस एसेंब्लेज ऑफ एक्सटर्नल मोटिव्स एंड फॉर्म्स मेटेरियल्स एंड टेक्निक्स इट इज टू बी कॉन्सीव्ड as uh, the kandariya mahadeva and other media vegetables are conceived in terms of a rhythm a urdha and talat chanda as it is said the horizontal ascent and the vertical ascent and uh, this is equated with the breath of the devotee the devotee the bhakta bhakta means divided fragmented who is trying to become abhivakta by uniting with the consciousness of the temple and uh, that process is achieved through abhigamanam approaching the temple productionum going around in the circumambulatory uh, by uh, bhuta siddhi and vyapaka dasa touching the temple uh, with mental fingers because it is the mantra murti and um, so this uh, assimilation is also to take place in um, um, belur temple unless one knows the tradition one will only see it is a combination of motifs and techniques and materials if you see the internet i also saw it it uh, explains it like that so obviously the symphony uh, of uh, and consonance of form and meaning necessity and embellishment beauty and utility is not understood so in art appreciation it is very important uh, to explain the outer form as a vehicle for inner meaning and uh, if there is shithila samadhittam and the line is broken or the body which is a meditative vessel is not supple it's it's withers or it uh, shakes or it is uh, collapsed obviously art is missing and aesthetics cannot be conveyed only through uh, words it has to be conveyed through art so the art has to be living as life has to be artistic which is the message of swami ji and our philosophy next um so some of our other temples in bengal next um well stop here for a moment so it is uh, and uh, this understanding and that has to be induced in the student uh by going beyond forms to the meaning now i am showing uh, bharut move on they have seen bharut for some time this is sachi then next this is amaravati now uh you have to linger on these images for some time i have not lingered but what uh, a western interpreter uh, sees this as bakhofa that uh, 
he explains it in terms of Wolflinian polarities. It is closed or open. It is tectonic or atoctonic. It has frame or no frame in physical terms. Then he tries to go beyond the physical terms to explain it uh, in terms of his teacher, Wolflin, and Wolflin's teacher, Strajkowski, that uh, this is a movement in consciousness, a movement in Bharut uh, uh, from the uh, unconsciously unclear through Sachi, which is consciously clear, to Amaravati, which is consciously unclear. Now, this is the theory of Dilthi on consciousness. But if you compare it with the with Indian theory of consciousness, they will explain it as a movement from abstraction without exaltation uh, through exaltation without abstraction uh, to frenetic movement uh, which uh, misses the abstraction and the exaltation but uh, provides a mirror to the age uh, of growing anxiety and uh, essencelessness. Uh, next. Kitna minutes, bacha, have time already exit kar diya Acha, now we come to uh, Ramakrishna's image. Now this image is a meditative vessel. It is not an image, it is a pratika on which we do adharopa of some physical features. But Ram Ramakrishna himself it radiates light and therefore it has been seen as radiant with light of that uh, supreme intelligence. Move on. Buddha. Now, a Buddha next in uh, Sarnath, Buddha in uh, Mathura next. Buddha in Gandhara, next. Buddha again in Mathura. Now there is again a difference uh, in aesthetic perception between Mathura, Gandhara and Sarnath. Uh, Mathura has been explained by somebody that we are seeing uh, very physically robust features, almost like a pugilist, a wrestler. In Sarnath we see a dematerialization, a decorporealization in the robes, in the hem of the garment, in everything. And in Gandhara, we, because of the Greco-Roman influence, we see a reduction to physical elements. So, the wastage of uh, Buddha's body due to uh, fast is seen, seen in purely physical terms with uh, the ribcage showing in utter stark detail. So Gandhara art, because it follows uh, the Greco-Roman uh, heritage, there is a, a difference here which has to be understood. Next. See, we say same in the standing images. You will see that uh, uh, in the standing images, next, uh, that, they, they, that in the Buddha in Sarnath and Buddha in Mathura, they are again different. One is uh, physically derived from the great Jaksha images uh, with uh, power uh, contained 
whereas the uh, Sharnath images become more of meditative vessels. Next. Uh, Ajanta, again moving to painting, the image of uh, compassion Karuna, the Karuna Paramita, uh, that Buddha, even after attaining enlightenment, stayed on for 40 years to redeem benighted humanity, which is why the Hinajana moved to Mahajana to show that expansion of consciousness. Next. Um, then other paintings. Now these are paintings without much deeper meaning. They are they mostly illustrate in uh, Pahari painting, Kisangar, Jaipur, uh, uh, Kangra Hills. Uh, next. They illustrate a, a sylvan atmosphere luxuriant vegetation, uh, shapely uh, ladies uh, born in the shelter of the court and done by painters who move from court to court to seek their patronage. Now here is a modern uh, painting. Now I, I forgot to bring in uh, the screen by Edward Munch, which shows the entire sky being torn up by the scream, the entire atmosphere being revealed by the cry. And that shows a an epitomized uh, form of the current anxiety. Next. Krishna, almost ladylike, Next. And then uh, rock art, folk and tribal art. Next. The worldly art. Next. The uh, house art in Jharkhand. Next. Now, uh, these, one forgets that uh, to look at folk and tribal art or rock art that there is a continuity between uh, uh, the rock art and the folk and tribal art. And uh, they still continue to practice the same techniques and uh, practices like infibulation, psychiatrists, body painting. And uh, they are ecologically isolated. It is still possible to recover the understanding of shape and meaning in prehistoric rock art to some extent through cognitive and replicative archaeology uh, rather than by direct explanation. Now showing uh, architecture, Corbusier's form. We'll see next. Next. Is there a next? Or is it over? Over, okay. Okay, doesn't matter. Corbusier has come to Chandigarh also and we know that uh, uh, he was a painter also, Jean Genre, and uh, this cubist and uh, other forms, imitating organic forms, have been uh, taken into Chandigarh architecture also and it influences an entire generation of architects in India. And uh, now uh, the unit is uh, the, the combination of cooperative living of individual uh, space and uh, common, uh, common shared space in the unites in Marseille uh, have been un uh, emulated by, scholar, by uh, architects like Charles Correa in Mumbai and in other places of the world. And so what one is talking about is uh, unhitching uh, Indian art perceptions from Western perceptions, learning from uh, the Western perceptions as uh, 
Swamiji also did, but going beyond them, learning about uh, uh, the line and the uh, pattern and the volume and the color, where the right mix is essential, but going beyond uh, line, volume, color to meaning. And uh, it is that uh, uh, which will different art from aesthetics in an art appreciation course. Thank you. Oh, yeah. There's another sculpture, I didn't see it. Pashupati sculpture, I didn't see. So you are quite right. In fact, I mean, uh, Rodin, uh, Degas, uh, Rothenstein, uh, they all created their art after deeply appreciating Indian art. They, they have written extensive articles talking about Indian art. And their forms, uh, are Michelangelo's forms, Michelangelo of course was not aware of Indian art. Uh, they uh, show uh, that uh, uh, urgency, there is no inferiority or superiority here. What we are talking about is uh, uh, an attempt of Samiji uh, to bring in that energy. Because as I said, he talked about uh, both Europe and India sleeping. And uh, Europe awakening again in Renaissance. India has to be awakened uh, through bursts of energy and, the, and it can be done uh, by drawing on the roots of Indian art itself and uh, uh, how to draw on those roots he has given a demonstration but uh, uh, since he was, his purpose was to um, uh, work for uh, unity and diversity uh, beyond religions, beyond sects, beyond uh, all barriers of understanding. He spent his life in that, uh, a brief uh, military career of 39 years. And uh, so he didn't have opportunity to realize everything, I think, that he uh, thought of. But I am quite sure that Diga, uh, uh, Roda are uh, known to, so he had talked about that, uh, Swamiji also. Yeah. In uh, one of your statements, you said Indian arts is appreciated to the Western eyes. So here I am taking a little bit umbrella. Sir, our fault is we don't write books. There are one million books on the Western art and on Indian art, even we look to the eye of a Westerner, that Stella Kamrish, she has voluminous work. But other than that, a few books from Shantiniketa and a few books here and there. But there is no writing by the Indian people explaining your, our art, which I think there should be 10,000 books. Otherwise, uh, people will, uh, once we have heard that to appreciate art, you have to learn. You have to learn to appreciate. 
So that teaching, unfortunately, sir, uh, we are not getting from our Indian producers. I completely agree with you. There is no difference of opinion. Uh, but as you can see, uh, uh, Western uh, uh, scholars and Western uh, galleries and Western museums, they have co-opted India into the Western art historical discourse. Even the museums are being made in the Western world. And uh, as the museums are growing, the country is dying. And the, uh, it is the museums for demuseumization. It is uh, the restoration of the heritage to its own community. And the community uh, has written. There are many texts uh, in uh, Gujarat, uh, like Manushala Chandrika in uh, uh, Kerala, on house building or the Sompuras and Shalaks in Gujarat who are creating uh, architecture even today uh, who have written or the Orishan uh, not only the Sompuras but also the Shilpa Shastra which has been translated and interpreted there they are all there but in terms of uh, uh, building bridges between East and West uh, the few scholars who have worked are uh, Taylor Kamrish, who also learned from Indian Pandits when she was teaching here, or uh, Kumar Sami, who acquired his own understanding uh, through a deep study of uh, Western and Eastern texts. Uh, and uh, I mean, later on, people like uh, you see uh, uh, Roy, etc., but their scholarship is not of that order. Even people like, uh, uh, some of these Indian art has been explained in by people like Malman, among Indians by uh, Gopinathra. But uh, currently, there has been no uh, real publication. And I am sure that the art appreciation course uh, can become a secret uh, for ideas. Uh, it is not only a question of uh, writing, it is also a question of uh, refurbishing the scene, regeneration. And regeneration, look at the uh, thousands of uh, terracotta temples, I mean, in, in, in uh, Bengal. And uh, uh, mostly they are deserted by the communities or even by the families, and they are in bad way. And one of my uh, uh, tasks is to restore them. But unless the community uh, uh, support is taken, and it is a participative venture, it will fail. Sir, I wish you start writing on it. You I have written, I have written a lot on Bengal, but I have written a lot. If you go to my, I shall give you my card. You can look at over 200 articles uh, on the event. We will see you in some way. Uh, yes, yeah. sir. Sure. Sir, I enjoyed your talk in NC. I had a question relating to one of the stills that you showed. Uh, if I am not mistaken, one of the stills was from Indian miniature painting. And I'm uh, wondering if the outer inner dichotomy that you raised uh, regarding uh, aesthetics and art, that applies to uh, Indian miniatures as well. Uh, I, just a matter of curiosity. Sure, sure. And, uh, and the second question is, I just wanted the reference from, where, where do I get uh, Shamiji's uh, reflections on art? Uh, where can I read about it? <laughs> Well, uh, the, say, take the second question first. The Samiji's uh, reflections are scattered through his uh, volumes. Uh, some of them are in volume 2, some of them are in volume 5, some of them are in volume 10. And then one uh, culls them and then uh, 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 puts them in the background of his thought. They are not available in one place. So, uh, uh, so that's why I tried to provide a brief summary after uh, recalling what he uh, said. As regards the uh, miniature painting, uh, um, and Samiji uh, had so much to say and so much to do and much of what he wanted to say or do left unsaid or undone and the, I, what I am trying to do is to think him forwards into the future, tell him forwards into the future, reread him, retell him in the same way as we are trying to retell the heritage. As regards the uh, paintings 
the paintings uh, were born mostly in the lap of the courts in the uh, Wales and as well as in Rajputa. And uh, uh, so there was this atmosphere of uh, romance and of uh, uh, courtly chivalric, uh, you see, uh, atmosphere. And uh, 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 these uh, were uh, painters who were also uh, hangers on to some extent. Even if they are great painters, and may, many of them were hangers on on the royalty, local royalty. And their uh, patronage patterns uh, have been recovered by Bien Goswami, for instance, uh, from the pilgrimage records uh, in uh, the funerals which are conducted in Hardwar. And, uh, uh, but uh, uh, the, the uh, miniature paintings can be distinguished also as great or as uh, inferior art through this union of ethos and pathos only. And it is easily possible to distinguish a nine sukh uh, from another uh, or a molaram from others. I mean, the, it is not it, the fineness of the uh, brush or the uh, sensitivity of the palette and uh, the mixing of colors. Uh, they are not to be ignored. When I am denigrating a study of mere pattern and color and volume, I am not denigrating their combination. If the combination is artistically and aesthetically done, I mean, these are people who evoke the atmosphere of the hills, the rolling hills and dells, uh, the uh, rivers and waters, the blossoming trees, uh, the fine uh, uh, women and men. These are all, uh, these are, this is not possible. I mean, the, the, the fact that they attract, I mean, uh, now there are imitations in uh, near Jalpat uh, Hotel on the uh, road. And uh, I would not even decry the imitations at least the imitations are going going on. If one looks at Jaina miniature paintings, on the other hand, they are built on iconographic and iconological principles, but they are very schematic and formalized. And if one analyzes their hierarchical uh, form, and there is a uh, sense in that also. But sometimes the exaltation is lost in that hierarchy, which was not missing in some of the earlier paintings, in the National Museum, for instance. There are uh, 10th century uh, paintings, manuscript paintings, which are superb. Uh, so uh, there is a change in uh, uh, perception because the world from which they draw drew is also eroded, no? And the world is lost. Uh, so therefore, uh, they have to draw uh, inspiration artificially from whatever they have. Is it possible to get uh, access to literature on miniature paintings? Oh, yeah. yeah. Online. online, yes. I mean, online uh, you will uh, type any uh, school. You type Kangra, you will find uh, the images. You will type, uh, you see, uh, uh, Nurpur, you will find the images. If you, but you have to know the schools, you will type. Yes. So to that extent, you have to read at least one uh, uh, book. I mean, either by B. N. Goswami or by uh, uh, somebody. I mean, uh, B. N. Goswami. B. N. Goswami is still living. He is about 90. But he is in Chandigarh. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Sure. Two or three words about the Raghurajpur Patta. Raghurajpur? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Raghurajpur Patta Chitras. Uh, you see, the uh, Patta Chitras, in fact, Swamiji himself uh, spoke about the Patuas. He spoke about the Chala Chitras. He spoke about the uh, uh, vessels which are made and the women's uh, uh, drawings. And uh, he uh, said that any day, these are better than Raja Ravi Barma's uh, uh, imitations of European art, uh, some of which uh, makes me ha hang my head with shame. I mean, uh, Samiji, of course, was a Puritan. Uh, so he may not be Puritan, but then uh, that is his opinion. I mean, uh, about uh, uh, when comparing, uh, he was saying that a cottage in uh, India Wherever you look at it, whether it is a cottage on uh, stilts in North East or a cottage in uh, Bengal, 
or a Chala temple uh, imitating the uh, cottage. He says it is better uh, than the piled up boxes of architecture which I see now. I mean, even in 19, I mean, uh, towards the end of the 19th century, obviously these piled up boxes had been created in the name of architecture, which had no aesthetics and no art either. So the Patuas, I mean, uh, one has to support them. Well, there, are, uh, there is an attempt to innovate with their forms and uh, in the name of uh, marketability. And uh, there is always this conflict between tradition and uh, uh, modernity in terms of market acceptability. Uh, I am quite sure that uh, it is possible to use uh, these traditional forms in new combinations and that uh, for instance I mean uh, transferring painting to households. But uh, some of this art like Madhuvani art for instance uh, is being translated on a large scale on canvas, being transferred from walls and floors to canvas by uh, modern urban women uh, who are sophisticates in Delhi and they are selling like hotcakes also. But uh, that is a, a commercial, uh, you see, vulgarization, I mean, which uh, has lose, lost its moorings in the tradition and the aesthetics. Aesthetics and the, and the backdrop. Ultimately, they were decorating their house and their floor and their doors. They were not uh, uh, working for the market which is not to say that they are not to work for the market. I mean, uh, that's why one, one needs a eco-tourist itinerary here, so that the tourist goes uh, there without uh, destroying the art at the roads. I mean, uh, something like that. There is a lot of lot to be said about that because I have dealt with uh, tourism also on a large scale. Yeah. What is the definition of aesthetics? Of? Aesthetics. Aesthetics. The aesthetics, uh, I mean, the definition of aesthetics, I mean, of course, it is a word which can be derived from the roots. I mean, uh, aesthesis. Uh, but uh, uh, the definition is uh, uh, clearly that it is the uh, sense of the uh, form uh, and the meaning of the form uh, beyond its outer uh, patterns. And uh, it is uh, what is called iconology rather than iconography, on which uh, you see a person like Panofsky and Kumarasan worked, East and West. So uh, they have books on this. I mean, uh, that iconography is uh, 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 merely sticking to the outer form uh, without understanding the, uh, the synthesis. Uh, uh, but uh, iconology is going beyond that iconic, iconographic traits to understand its meaning and to convey the meaning, the intuition of, let us say, sense of in, uh, the mortal or the immortal. So uh, that, that has been discussed extensively. It is not as if I am trying to give a new definition. But it is, uh, it is, it is at the root of uh, understanding what art appreciation is about. Art appreciation cannot be confined to iconography. It has to extend to iconology. I have one follow-up question, sort of. So you see many different paintings. Take for example, Gerdika versus something by Van Gogh, um, Sunflower, So these are two very, very different when they keep this, they keep you in a very different way. So, how do you bring um, aesthetics into both of them? Like into? Into both of them. Both. Oh. These two type of something is like really hard hitting, and something is very soft. So, how again, you again, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, history has sat in uh, judgment and assessment of uh, painters and sculptors and artists. And if uh, a person like uh, uh, Michelangelo or Raphael has stood out, have stood out, or if uh, uh, Roda or Dega have stood out, or if Van Gogh or Goga have stood out, there is a reason. And the reason comes from uh, that uh, uh, innovative I mean, uh, experimentation with uh, colors and patterns 
to convey uh, a, a new meaning because they are also conveying new meanings. I mean, uh, when one uh, looks at, uh, uh, let us say, uh, um, uh, Van Gogh's letters or Gauguin's uh, 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 writing about himself or Van Gogh uh, in Arles or uh, 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 Gauguin in Southeast Asia. I mean, one uh, finds that they were living uh, what they were trying to do. Sir, I mean, can, they you were, say, can you say it is their mental picture? It is their mental yeah. This is a replication of their mental frame. Mental picture That's and also they lived what they believed in. That's at uh, that point. Okay. Uh, they lived at their, what they believed in. They were not uh, uh, fraudulent people who were trying to just, you know, uh, uh, throw uh, charades or, uh, you see, uh, in, and defraud, you know, people. Because they didn't ever earn money during their lifetime. And they, so they created for the uh, sake of creation. And they have stood out because of that. Irrespective of what I say in judgmental. Is the concept of aesthetics is ever changing from the time of Aristotle? Of course. Yeah. Of course. So I mean, uh, the concept of the history of aesthetics uh, itself will be uh, ever changing, and uh, uh, the uh, 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 if one looks at uh, uh, let's say Plato uh, when he's talking about the city uh, in which uh, artists are not desirable persons, artists should be banished. And uh, uh, or Socrates is not seen as an artist uh, of words. He is seen as a uh, antisocial person. So one is uh, uh, seeing a, a discord between uh, the self perception and the societal perception uh, locally, and uh, 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 with changing in change in time, uh, these people uh, have entered. I mean, Plato has entered. Uh, Neoplatonic philosophy, and uh, uh, you see the scholastic philosophy, uh, and uh, Saint Thomas Aquinas and uh, Eckhart. So they have had their uh, uh, life again. So uh, who am I to sit in judgment on the history of understanding or misunderstanding? But then it is obvious that there is a history of aesthetics and changing perceptions. And uh, nowadays, for instance, this. Uh, uh, reductionism in terms of uh, Indian aesthetics uh, uh, to uh, acceptance of all the westernized norms is a reductionism which is not acceptable. I mean, it has to also uh, go back to its roots, refresh its understanding of modernity, and that has been that is being said not only by me, that was being said by people like uh, 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 what was his the great artist uh, um, uh, Moro. I mean, and Gurukha uh, Janand uh, was the first chairman of the uh, Lyrical Academy, which I headed. And they are uh, talking about, uh, uh, they are receiving uh, letters from uh, uh, great Western uh, artists, uh, including Paul Klee, that uh, you should uh, uh, gauge the roots of your own tradition and give us lessons instead of imitating us blindly. I mean, Western forms are not to be discarded. I mean, they, they, they are, they are uh, certainly part of the human heritage. But then, how do you discard your own heritage because of, uh, I mean, that kind of blind uh, uh, fidelity? Sir, deliberately, uh, so did uh, this uh, sculptor at uh, Thaudi, I mean, uh, where the elephant is only half emergent. And uh, there will be such unfinished, uh, deliberately unfinished sculptures in Indian art also. And of course, uh, Michelangelo, um, uh, uh, the theory about uh, that kind of unfinished art, um, 
it has uh, uh, gone into aesthetic exaltation as well as despair. Some people are exalted that he did, he did not finish. And uh, if one looks at Pieta, for instance, I mean, uh, uh, the Pieta, and then uh, we have a, uh, let us say, uh, a uh, Raza or a, uh, um, uh, a uh, uh, Swaminathan or somebody from contemporary art uh, emulating uh, some of those forms, I mean, Pieta or uh, uh, Christ or something, uh, with their own understanding of the, uh, uh, I don't say that they are not innovating, they are also innovating and uh, uh, one cannot discard those experiments. Or, uh, for instance, who is that uh, uh, great uh, sculptor, uh, oh, for instance, uh, Bruta, I mean, who is a sculptor and who went away to the West. Now, if one looks at these distorted, uh, uh, you see, faces and forms, one can recall um, similar forms in the Western sculpture also. But one would not uh, say that uh, just because uh, he was doing it and also taking an idea from the West about distortion, uh, he was doing something which was uh, uh, artistically inaccurate or inesthetic. I mean, he, uh, even, an, even a, an idea can be borrowed and made one's own and then rendered uh, authentically. So that has been done in this part of the world also. Sorry? Peter Bruegel. Yeah. Can you put him also in the same time? Because, see, uh, that time. No, 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 you cannot. I mean, I'm only mentioning that he is available. Uh, Bruta is there, and uh, 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 Swaminathan is there. I mean, uh, 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 there is this difference between Bengal school and uh, Bombay school. And the uh, Bengal school had tried uh, to uh, go back to the tradition and renew the uh, contemporary art with uh, uh, Western uh, as well as Eastern sources. Whereas the Bombay uh, uh, school uh, clearly went and uh, tied its moorings to Western art. From the very beginning that divide has been there. And even today the College of Art has not been able to open its doors, I mean, to reveal its art. I tried to do it, I mean, uh, with the 150 years of uh, its existence, but it was not possible because of judicial proceedings, this and that. So, one should try it, try that, yeah. Then she is first. Yeah. So, um, one question has always been, uh, you know, uh, coming to my mind. When uh, academically, uh, like art is taught, there's uh, one theory part, one practical part. So, when uh, the theory is being taught, uh, we are taught the Eastern tradition, which surely should be taught to us. And we are taught about Rasa, we are taught about Chitra Sutra, or all the ar architectural uh, of, uh, heritage architectural heritage we have. But when practically it is being taught in different academic institution of art, they follow the Western thing. And uh, many a time which, we have, which I heard from acquaintances or from a very little experience I've seen, they try to fo uh, focus on the form most, from the very first basic classes, that uh, the total thought is of the Western thought. So it's for the coming generation, it is very difficult, I think, to you know have an understanding of our the aesthetics understanding of our Eastern background and trying to implement a Western type of you know art. So how can this be bridged? This is a recent phenomenon. I mean if one uh, uh, looks at uh, uh, the art of uh, Ramkinkar Baich or you know uh, uh, his uh, followers, or Dandral Bose, I mean, who clearly I mean, uh, uh, followed the tradition as well as uh, modernity. And uh, so that was the time when the uh, flowering of the soul uh, took place uh, to uh, uh, take the best from uh, both East and West. And uh, or their icon, uh, Taikan was there, the Japanese painter. And uh, uh, so uh, but if, if this is a current phenomenon, as I said, because of the invasion of the market. And the invasion of the market, uh, even the Europe has now descended to the background. It is now America which has taken over and even that market will dry up very soon. And uh, uh, so, uh, uh, because the, uh, the intern sculpture, 
I mean, to have an original, except by theft and spoliation, is very costly. And therefore, people are going for, uh, you see, contemporary art uh, and artifacts. And, uh, but uh, in practice, to align theory and practice, it is not necessary uh, that the uh, theory and practice are aligned only in fidelity to a particular period of time. I mean, I would call even uh, uh, Shanti Diketani tradition. I mean, even if it is only uh, 50, 60, 70 years back, uh, 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 or the difference between uh, the two teachers, Avanina Tagore or Patsy Brown and others, uh, in the Bengal school. Uh, so, uh, the tradition evolves, and so does modernity, and uh, one should not have a, uh, uh, what shall I say, a kind of hidebound uh, loyalty uh, to uh, um, uh, exactly align theory and practice. The practice may diverge, the practice may differ, but you are absolutely right in saying that the practice should be infused uh, by an understanding of the uh, theory. In other words, so what is the point in rendering a few patterns and a few lines and a few colors if one doesn't have any idea of, about what one is doing? But that has to be instinctive. It cannot be, uh, if it is taught, uh, then uh, uh, the intuitive apprehension of reality may go. And uh, uh, so practice has to be uh, uh, voluntary. And it has to be uh, um, uh, with the, by the student or the uh, scholar or the artist on his or her own. Uh, if it is uh, thrust down the gullet, then there is a danger uh, that the theory and the practice both may become uh, stultified and imitated. So uh, if that fine balance is uh, the task of the uh, teacher who aligns theory and practice. Or invite a, a great uh, sculptor or a teacher who has done it. So his demonstration itself will uh, give the idea. None? Sir, are we looking towards a future where art would have no uh, frontiers, no borders? It, it's just, I mean, uh, the whole, uh, the entire gamut would seem the same. Are we looking towards that kind of a future? You see, uh, uh, the sameness, I mean, and uh, the universal uh, uh, ideal that Swamiji pursued is uh, quite different. Uh, you see the uh, loss of uh, the identity and differences will always coexist. And uh, that is the, that should be the law of the world. I mean this homogenization, biocultural reductionism, uh, loss of uh, local identities is the biggest danger today. It is, uh, it is uh, what Swamiji was uh, once uh, wrote uh, to uh, Sister Nivedita. We uh, uh, human beings are like uh, cattle uh, being driven to the slaughterhouse, hastily nibbling the grass on the roadside. Uh, what he meant was, uh, you see, this uh, blind adherence uh, to uh, uh, certain borrowed ideas without uh, their absorption, without their uh, growing uh, in the soil um, or uh, under their own sunshine. Uh, so, uh, and uh, the world moving from, um, you see, uh, absolute uh, values to instrumental values. And, you know, uh, so what he was talking about was also uh, the advent of the sixth extinction, uh, that uh, uh, desertion of nature. Because uh, uh, as long as people have lived with nature, they have been able to survive. The moment they have given up nature, and uh, uh, try to desecrate it, then uh, the nature will have its revenge and the human being, in, 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 uh, human, humanity itself will uh, kill itself uh, without a comet shower, without a nuclear winter, without a geological cataclysm. And that is what is happening today. So the art of life is what Swamiji was trying to teach also. I mean, so these, uh, these two uh, emblems which we showed, showed of his uh, uh, appreciation of uh, uh, life artistic of arts living, I mean, is also a pointer uh, to his theory about living uh, with nature and not beyond or outside it. And not in strict fidelity uh, to its outer patterns, but to its inner manner of operation. I mean, which uh, the medieval scholastics also used to say. Inner manner is uh, 
the nature uh, sustains its own and its uh, bio biocultural diversity is self-sustaining. So the nature left to itself sustains itself. As soon as the human being interferes uh, with the uh, nature uh, uh, is, uh, loses its own. So he was pointing to a bigger picture. He didn't have time uh, to uh, conclude all his messages or finish all that he wanted to say. But uh, uh, these seeds of thought are germinating in his idea that ultimately uh, we are not uh, blind imitators of nature. We are following nature in its own manner of operation, in its uh, self-fecundating, self-germinating, self-rejuvenating, uh, you see, uh, ac ac approaches. So to that extent, I am taking your question beyond its uh, scope. I mean, uh, to explain the wider meaning of his uh, uh, life as it was not uh, uh, fully explicated. Oh, you were there? I see. Yeah, go ahead. Sir, I'm going to be in Bangladesh. Yeah, I'm going to be in Bangladesh. I'm going to be in the first question of the 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 Said is that uh, 
ইন্ডিয়ার ট্র্যাডিশনকে পুরো ছেড়ে যদি কেউ ওয়েস্টার্ন এই সমস্ত এস্থেটিককে কপি করে অর্থাৎ যেমন কয়েকটা আর্ট আছে যেগুলো অ্যাডভার্টাইজমেন্টের মতো ভদ্রলোকের নাম কি কন্টেম্পোরারি আর্টে যিনি ওই সমস্ত ফর্ম তৈরি করেছেন সেগুলো মানে সেগুলো অ্যাডভার্টাইজমেন্ট হিসাবে খুব ভালো কাজ করছে কিন্তু সেটাকে যদি কেউ ব্লাইন্ডলি ফলো করে এখন এখানে ছিটপুর রোডের ওপরে আমরা একটা এক্সারসাইজ করেছিলাম যে এখানে আমাদের কি বলে দেবব্রত ছিল তাতে তাতে ওই যে সমস্ত ট্র্যাডিশনাল আর্টিস্ট ছিল তারা যে সমস্ত কাজ করেছিল ওখানকার আর্কিটেকচার নিয়ে এবং আর্ট নিয়ে এবং ওই বাচ্চিদের যে সমস্ত অ্যালবেন একটা বেরিয়েছিল তাতে যেগুলো ছাপা হচ্ছিল সেগুলোকে রিভাইভ করা আমরা চেষ্টা করেছিলাম উডকাট এবং উইন্ডেল অসিতবাবু আমাদের সঙ্গে ছিলেন তারপর সেই সমস্ত প্রসেসগুলোকে আমরা বন্ধ করে দিয়েছি নিজেদের যে পুরো ওয়াকিং দ্য পাথ যদি বন্ধ করে দেওয়া হয় খালি লুক টু দি ওয়েস্ট তাহলে সেই এস্থেটিক্সের যে চেঞ্জিং পারসেপশন ওয়েস্টে এসছে সেটা এখানেও আসছে কিন্তু এখানকার কোনো ইভলিউশন হচ্ছে না ট্র্যাডিশন তো সেই সেইটার সম্বন্ধে একটা ভিভেন্স রয়েছে দ্যাট ইজ অল এবং অথবা যে অ্যালবার্টির যে সমস্ত আর্কিটেকচার অথবা রোমান প্যান্থিয়ান রোমান প্যান্থিয়ানের যে ওকুলাস যেটাকে বলে যেটা আই অফ দি ডোম সেটা আমাদের দেশে ব্রহ্মরন্ধ্র ধরা হয়েছে অর্থাৎ এই যে ডিফারেন্সটা আই অফ দি ডোম ইজ এ ফিজিক্যাল আসপেক্ট ইন এ রোমান ডোম ওকুলাস আমাদের এখানে সেটা ইট বিকামস পার্ট অফ এ সুপারনাল কনসেপশন ব্রহ্মরন্ধ্র সেখান দিয়ে কিভাবে যাবে স্ফোটা হবে যেটা স্বামীজির কথা তো সেই পারসেপশনটা আলাদা আফটার অল ফর্মকে পুরো কী করে ডিসকার্ড করা যেতে পারে সেটা ডোমো হতে পারে সেটা একটা কোনও হতে পারে ট্রাঙ্গলও হতে পারে সেই সমস্ত আউটার ফর্মকে বিভিন্নভাবে লোকে নিয়েছে ইস্ট এবং ওয়েস্ট এবং সেটা তো কয়েক পসিবল সেই জন্য পার্থেনান যদি কেউ দেখে যা বললাম যে পার্থেনানের আর্কিটেকচারকে লোকে ফিজিক্যালি অ্যানালাইজ করছে তার ব্যালেন্সটা কীভাবে তৈরি হয়েছে কীভাবে ইন্টারেস্টিংস হচ্ছে কীভাবে কাউন্টার ডিমিনিউশন হচ্ছে পিলারগুলো এখানে সেভাবে দেখা হচ্ছে না এখানে একটা যদি তুমি হাম্পিতে যাও আপনার যান হাম্পির যে আর্কিটেকচারের যে পিলারস তার ডিপ মিনিং রয়েছে তার মধ্যে ড্রয়িংসও রয়েছে প্রচুর এবং সেই প্রত্যেকটা পিলারের মধ্যে একটা টেম্পলের ফর্ম রয়েছে তার তার একটা পাদপীঠ আছে তার একটা ইয়ে কি বলে জগতি আছে সব কিছু আছে তো সেই জন্যে এই যে ইস্টার্ন ওয়েস্টার্ন পারসেপশন অবভিয়াসলি যে আমাদের দুটো একরকম এটা নয় যদিও তাদের মেটেরিয়াল এক হতে পারে কিন্তু আইডিয়া ইজ ডেফিনেটলি ডিফারেন্ট এখন সেটা এক হয়ে যাচ্ছে এটাই আমার আমাদের গ্রিভেন্স এখন ইউ আর লুজিং দ্য ডাইভার্সিটি যেটা স্বামীজি বলছিলেন যে ইউনিটি ইন ডাইভার্সিটি অর্থাৎ ডাইভার্সিটি অফ পারসেপশনের মাধ্যমেই লাইফ গ্রো করে যদি যে যে জিনিসটা একটা কনটেক্সটে তৈরি হয়েছে একভাবে তৈরি হয়েছে অথবা যা বললাম যে ওয়েস্টার্ন মার্কেট ফিট করার জন্য যে সমস্ত ম্যানিফেস্টার ডকুমেন্ট আর গ্যালারিজ তৈরি হচ্ছে তার জন্যই যদি আর্টিস্টরা কাজ করে তারা তো আর গ্রামে সাধারণ লোকের জন্য কাজ করবে না সে তো হলে তো খুব ভালো হচ্ছে কোথায় 
स्कूल हिसाब से प्रधान <laughs> प्रचुरान <laughs> लोक जो डिफ्यूशन 